When you said that you're not very good with pain, um, I thought, oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I might fate on camera, I'm not gonna lie. I thought we were gonna have a wiggler on the bed. <laughs> and definitely that laser was so traumatizing. Yeah, nothing will be as bad yes. as lasering your vagina. <laughs> On this episode of Under Your Skin, I've got singer, producer, DJ and local girl Eliza Rose joining me in the studio. We all know Eliza from her number one banger, Baddest of Them All. It's business as usual, yeah. And you can check out Eliza's new single, Business as Usual, which is out now, and her EP, which is out at the end of the month. Lib, make sure my belly rolls don't flap out, OK? Are it is there? actually quite flattering okay, when, cool. when you're down. OK, cool. Like a mermaid on the rock, you know? Oh. Yeah, that, I like that. I so like head that. this end. Ooh. So you nervous? I nervous about the pain. don't like pain. I hate pain. You'll be all right. Babe. I don't know. Like I'm just not one of the people that like. I'm pain. super <laughs> gentle, so you'll be fine. fabulous. Okay. And this is your first hand poke, right? Yes. Okay. Because so. like, all the other ones have been. <laughs> yeah, sh shouldn't be as bad as that. <laughs> and I'm getting my eyebrows done as well, Liv. Today, so double tattoo. Yeah, the numbing cream. Though I'm like slap that on, girl. So I'm expected to converse while this is happening. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna try. We're gonna try our best. <laughs> oh god. I feel a bit like I'm on the hospital operating table. So tell me about this tattoo. Obviously, this is the sweetest tattoo oh, ever. It's for my best friend Liberty, who's here today and is watching over, so I don't have a panic attack. Because we're like two peas in a pod, but obviously peas are not exactly like the sexiest tattoo to get. And then obviously Liberty also means freedom, so it's like a beautiful sentiment. And you two have known each other since kids, right? Yeah, 15, we, we became best friends. Liberty kind of picked me up from the curb. <laughs> we went to start Newington School together. Um, and we just never, we just never separated ever since. We've always been best friends. Oh, I love that. Still going strong, baby girl. I had laser the other day, and Lord have mercy upon my soul. Hair removal or yeah, tattoo? Yeah, hair removal, Jesus. I've that had is, tattoo. Is that I've, really bad? It's really oh painful. It's, I guess it's the same thing. Oh, you know, because, because it's burning the, yeah. You know, and it's hitting the skin and it's burning the hair in the follicle, right? Like yeah. in the little root. Exactly. Where did you get it on your body? <gasps> yeah. Oh I my god, they wonder it. And I have afro hair down there, so <laughs> it's really not. Do you have to shave it before or do you just Yeah, have... you have to shave it before. Okay, so you're like you're bald down there when they do it. I can't believe I'm doing this. A room full of people can make it even more awkward for myself. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's fine. I am a girl. So Do they put numbing cream on it? No, they don't. Oh god. Do they have like a tube like the cold air tube to no. blow cold on it? Air makes it better. You see how cold air? I don't have no cold air. Oh, they did you dirty. Oh my god! <laughs> What's this cold air you speak of? It's like of? a tube of like ice cold air that blows out and they like, they put it on the skin. Dawson special, that's what you get for going in Dawson. Right? <laughs> you just come I out with some hot some <laughs> I'm following you online and you're doing all these things and you've mm. just like grown exponentially over Thank the years. You. And I'm just like so enamored and proud to oh, see how you're amazing so sweet. you've done. Thank you so no, much. No, honestly, you've had an incredible success with a number one track. Mm. And now you're doing songs with Calvin Harris. Man like Calvin. How was that? What was that experience Yeah, like? that was very cool. He's so nice and normal. Like, you kind of expect him to be like a big superstar vibe, but he's just like proper bless. Nice down to earth vibe. Yeah, nice oh, down to good. earth, really sweet. Did he reach out to you? Yeah, he messaged me, slid up in them DMs. Oh, there you go. And um, yeah, it was just cute. He had kind of had half the song written, and then I kind of finished the rest and wrote the verses because it's quite important for me to write my own lyrics. Business as usual is an XDP, so I'm really looking forward to that. Go back to garagey a little bit as well, which is obviously my first love. Yeah. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this year. I've got, I'm kind of got pretty much a lot of my, my releases like prepped. I know a lot of what's coming out already. Oh yeah, so organised. Yeah, I exactly. Love that. Whereas I love with Bota, I kind of had Bota and I didn't have him really. I didn't expect that to happen, so I didn't really have a follow up. So I feel a lot more organised now. And like, how did it feel to have like the? Because it's like an overnight success, especially yeah, online. Bizarre. Like TikTok, Instagram, it just went so viral. I know, it was, it was bizarre. I was reading last night. It had over three hundred million. Streams? Yeah, I think so. It's that is... I know, it's mental. How do you, like, digest that? I just don't. I just kind of think of it as, like, a strange thing that happened. 
and then keep yeah. it moving, really. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you actually think about it too much, it just, you're almost like, okay, Matrix, come wake me up now. It was never my intention. I never set out to do that. So it's kind of just like a really cool thing that happened. But essentially, I want to, I don't want that to define me. I want to be able to put no. all my other kind of creative endeavours out. Yeah, of course. As well. You can't be boxed in by one track. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like a little bonus, really. And yeah, then, hell yeah. And a way for me to have more eyes and the other stuff that I want to do. So that's incredible. It's a blessing. So how was also the festival season this year? Because I know you're a big festival girl. Mm, we love our DJ festivals, circuit, don't we, Libsy? Right? <laughs> Is Libs with you all the time? Yeah, the Libs comes a lot. Libs comes a lot. Libs comes a lot. If I can get her off the damn dance floor or somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for festival season. Like this year, I'm trying to be a bit more mature and like being really well behaved so that I can mash myself up even more during festival season because there's so much touring. I feel like last year, it was my first year with proper touring mm -hmm. and I didn't actually realise how draining it is. Where did you go? Oh God, where didn't I go? So all over Australia, America and like I'd never been to America before, never been to Australia before. So it was my first time touring really heavily, first time touring the live show, which is different to the DJ show. There must be a lot more pressure doing a live show. It's learning a new skill, because one of the reasons I stopped singing years ago is because I hate performing live and I get so nervous. So I had to kind of approach it like now or never. And actually being able to do it in places like Australia and America where I'm not as known, was really nice because it took the pressure off a little bit. Yeah, I can imagine. You can, even though you're not incognito because people yeah. are coming to see you, but yeah, you yeah. feel a bit more disconnected yeah, from the space. Yeah, exactly. You f and I can really do up the caricature element because I'm like, where the hell even am I? Yeah. And it, those places are kind of places of extreme. So. Hide yourself under the big hat. Though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my whole vibe. So it's cool to be able to learn. I have I have really bad anxiety. I don't know mm, about you, but God. I, yeah. For someone who has anxiety, the thought of getting on a stage and doing something like that. I definitely get really bad anxiety and really bad imposter syndrome. Um, one of the things I'm doing to combat that is to try and stop going out as much and kind of stop drinking and partying because that definitely makes it worse. Obviously, I'm still going to do it because I love it, but just not every weekend. Yeah. Just kind of staying on top of stuff, really. And I think when I am going out, that voice in my head that likes to whisper, whisper, is so much stronger and I'm able to control it when I've when I've not been partying too much and I'm not overly tired. Yeah, the intrusive thoughts that yes, exactly. don't take over so they much. They don't take over so much. Because I'm trying to navigate both an underground and a more commercial space. And I see myself as an underground DJ, but then sometimes I'm, I'm making songs with Calvin Harris, which is more commercial. So navigating these two kind of polarised worlds is quite strange sometimes and sometimes I feel a bit torn between two and I'm like oh I'm not being cool enough or I'm not playing commercial enough for this audience so I've been learning to you know make the sets around where I am mm. if that makes sense and knowing yeah, I can yeah. do both but the voice in the head is just yeah it gives you the doubts basically like it humbles you to a certain mm. degree and you can like actually keep your like feet in the ground sometimes yeah 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 but you just can't let like the anxiety of like these irrational thoughts like mm. take over and it's also just a bit like one thing for me is like i don't want to look back and be like i just spent the last 10 years being bare anxious i'm really trying to focus on how can i enjoy this moment as much as i can and if things go wrong that's fine, keep it moving. Like. But you can also be an underground artist and stay true to yourself. Exactly, and, where you and I'm, from. Like, I'm understanding that now. Yeah, and dip your toe annoying. in the big pond and be like, look, exactly. this is what I can bring to the table, but exactly. I'm also like, an underground girl from East End, you know, exactly. that's, that's where my roots come from, so I'm going to stay true to that. Just because you fit really well into one sector doesn't mean that you're not going to thrive in others. A hundred percent. And things overlap as well, you know? Exactly, exactly, exactly. I think just Bota was such a hit by a train vibe. Like, it took some while, some getting used to, but I'm definitely getting there now. And I always was appreciative, but it didn't feel real for a very long time. And it still feels unreal, but... Yeah. Be proud of yourself though, babe. I am proud of myself. Good. I'm That's like, thank God thing. something paid off, because I was doing bit. I was trying to do like, work for ages and ages and you're like, is it going to, something's going to happen? Off, yeah. Like, just before Bota came out, I was like, this is long, brother. I'm just going to retrain to be a teacher. Like, honestly, about three months, I was like, I can't keep doing this. This is just outrageous. I'm not getting any money. And then I just kind of carried on and then, and then it popped off, thank God. So I was truly grateful because I was kind of getting to the end of my tether of being broke. Yeah, but the universe was like, let me show you yeah, how great universe, you can be. Yeah, I was like, be. OK, girl, you've waited long enough. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> If you weren't going to be a, a musician, mm. which you were obviously destined to be, <laughs> um, you said you wanted to teach.
teach? Working with kids is just something I've always li liked, like maybe going into teaching English or something like that. I don't really know, I've just done bits of teaching here and there throughout my life as like a little bit of a side job. Done like supply teaching and really? singing teaching. Yeah, the yeah, coolest yeah. supply teacher oh ever. Oh my God, I mean, I don't think the kids thought that. They just, anyone older than like 21, they're like, yeah. oh, grandma. <laughs> So, and then you accidentally say like a slang word and they're like, oh my God, gross. And you're like, oh my God. One of the reasons I actually stopped singing was because I was like, no, I'm too old. And this is when I was like 22, it's ridiculous. But before there was such an ageism around musicians, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, like the elderly category in X Factor was like over 25s or something like that. I know, it's bizarre. Amy Winehouse had like written Back to Black at like 23. And so I was kind of looking at this like, well, you know, I haven't even had an EP out. And there were a multitude of reasons that put me off kind of singing, that being one of them. And I just feel like in the last 10 years, so much has changed. Like there's that ageism surrounding music is, it's still there, but it's certainly not to the degree that it used to be. Mm. And I think that's really, really cool. How's it feeling? I'm nearly done with the outline. I'm feeling like it's not that bad at all. Amazing. I mean, yeah, hand poked is most definitely better. And I got you Lib when you want to come back and get her name. <laughs> Lib, get lies on your forehead. That's what, that's <laughs> yeah, what I yeah want. we just did face tats. <laughs> so you were born in the East End? Yes. You were born around here, right? Yeah, born in, where was I? Stanford Hill was my first house, but I was born in Humberton Hospital. Definitely East London till I die, baby. I've lived in East like. 14 years now. Yeah, so before it was like truly gentrified for real. Because I had the first shop over, just around there, I'm in the peanut factory. Mm. So I had that there like seven years ago. And even then, Hackney Wick was still a bit like, mm. you know? Dodgy, yeah, 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 yeah 100%. Definitely not like built up like it is. No. With it's like, all the canals are posh now, yeah, with all the new builds. So if you could hope for anything for East London in the next like five, 10 years, what would it be? It's just more funding for the arts and yeah. the club scene and the creativity and all the things that make East London what it is and was and what pulled people to come and live there in the first place, really. It's just like so much funding for the arts has been cut. It's such a shame. But it seems to be like the first thing that they do yeah. is like they don't understand how important creative fields are for community. Mm -hmm. Like it's often the glue that holds it together, exactly. you know? Exactly. Well, London's a hustling city though, isn't yeah, it? You, you can't be here and just be like lollygagging around. No, no, you've got to be doing like 10 things. Yeah. You've done so well, babe. I thought you were going to... When you said that you're not very good with pain, um, I thought, oh no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, we're I have was a little... thinking I might faint on camera, I'm not going to lie. I thought we are going to have a wiggler on the bed. <laughs> it's not enjoyable, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, oh, yeah. yeah. Your hand and definitely that like, laser was so traumatising. This is not as bad. Yeah, nothing will be as bad yeah, as lasering your vagina. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's all worth it in the end. Exactly, fingers crossed, I know. I do love getting whatever I've done. It just such, it makes such a big difference as having good. There is nothing yeah, like having a game fresh changer. pair of eyebrows. Literally. It's like having a new face. Yeah, no, real talk is so true. When I get my eyebrows tinted and waxed, like I go in a slug and I come out like, <laughs> feeling like this beautiful. Butterfly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you do look like really intense and angry on like day five. Like you're looking like you're vexed at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you to, luckily I've got a fringe. I'm hoping I can kind of get away with it. But like you do kind of have to hide in your house. I'm sure you could rock a stern brow. <laughs> Just looking really pissed off with everyone who talks to me. Sometimes that's down for it. Yeah, sometimes yeah. that's good. Sometimes that's good. I'm kind of down for it. Especially if you're doing like mundane tasks like shopping and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, don't chat to me. Yeah, especially My having like bright coloured hair and like being all cute <laughs> and like dressing all cute. Like people want to chat to you. No, all the yeah, time. no. I've had a couple of comments like. Colourful girl. I'm like, okay, shush. <laughs> I'm like, who? Who took it to you? Oh. <laughs> me? <laughs> Little old me? Right, babe, we are done. Fabi. Guys, don't get my pum pum on camera, please. <sighs> okay. Thank you. I'm so happy. So oh, cute. It's super cute. Liberty, come and have a look. Because oh. if you don't like it, then we're yeah. fine. <laughs> I feast for lifey. <laughs> Oh man, now my dad really is going to think we're lesbians. <laughs> 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 Thanks, babes. Give me a little huggy. A I really pleasure. appreciate it. Yes, we did it, Lib. <laughs> Best friends for life. And now it's found in blood. <laughs> <laughs>